Political Action Committee, PDA, Progressive Democrats of America, declared Tuesday, November 30th, National Call-In Day to say no to Social Security and Medicare benefit cuts proposed by former Senator Alan Simpson and President Clinton's former Chief of Staff, Erskine Bowles, co-chairman of the Deficit Commission on Fiscal Responsibility put together by President Obama. In addition to Collins, which, according to PDA members, shut down Congress's switchboards twice today, members of PDA came to D.C. to lobby Congress to cut military spending. Amongst the lobbyers was Donna Smith, community organizer for the California Nurses Association and national co-chair of PDA. Social Security and Medicare, we understand, are going to be under attack from the Deficit Commission and this ill-advised effort to try and balance the federal budget on the backs of programs that aren't the problem with the federal deficit. So we're here to let them know loudly and clearly with a large coalition of people that that's not the way to balance the budget. It's not the way to cut the deficit. Jan Schakowsky, one of the 18 members comprising the Deficit Commission, was approached by PDA. Schakowsky submitted a report of her own to counter the simpson Bowles proposal. My plan leaves the middle class alone and, the, and low income people alone. And that's because when we talk about shared sacrifice, there has not been shared sacrifice until now. There's not been shared opportunity until now. Really over the last two decades, ordinary Americans have been lucky to stay even. Many of them have seen their income decline. And now we have the biggest disparity between the rich and poor in this country. And, and so we, need, we can solve the, the debt and the deficit problem, um, first, by creating jobs, and second, by making sure the people who pay for it are the ones who enjoyed the party. While there are some points of agreement amongst the reports, such as cuts to the defense budget, their approaches vary. I took some of my things from the report, the, um, uh, from the Simpson-Bowles report. Um, the good news is that everyone seems to agree that the defense budget does need to be cut. I went um, uh, about 10 percent further. The Bowles-Simpson plan cut about $100 billion from the defense budget, although it also did it by freezing military salaries and cutting military health care. Can you imagine? And also tax expenditures. Those are those deductions that, that uh, affect, again, mostly wealthy Americans. They get rid of all of them. I take one, the, those that affect the wealthy uh, the most. Um, and, and so there are a number of things that I think we agree on, but the philosophy is very different. According to the Labor Department, unless Congress reinstates federal extended benefit programs, two million people stand to be cut from unemployment insurance benefits by the end of this year. Representative Schakowsky spoke against the termination of these benefits. The other thing we need to do right now, this week, or in the next few days, is make sure that the two million people who lost their unemployment starting this very day are able to have money in their pockets and then we extend unemployment insurance benefits. And it's not just good for those individuals. Again, it is good for the economy. Those are the people who are going to go out and spend the money, create demand. You know, they talk about the job creators are these rich people. Well, they've had money. Where are those jobs that they're creating? They're not creating jobs, neither are small businesses, until people are going to buy things. And they aren't going to buy things if they don't have money in their pocket. Schakowsky's plan challenges economic models that have not fulfilled their aim of economic prosperity and growth across the board. The representative takes a direct shot at the Republicans' defense of the Bush tax cuts. What we need to act on are living wages so that um, in this country people can have a, uh, that this be a high wage economy where can, people can have a good standard of living. And that's what is going to um, spur um, businesses and, and growth in, in our economy. I mean, if you believe, as I do, that the engine of the economy is from the bottom up, people having money that they can spend, um, then, you know, we can have prosperity. But it's, it's incredible how resilient this notion of trickle-down is. It's just amazing to me um, that even though we have seen that not work, as recently as a couple of years ago, um, that, and, and even now, um, they, they stick to their message. Well, we have to be even more resolute. Members will have until Friday, when the final vote takes place, to reflect on the revised draft.